Now, forgive me for not knowing, but is there a thing you can think of like 20 years ago where, where people were jumping on, these executives were jumping on it as the thing? Like, we got to keep in stride with this. We got to keep up with this dominant narrative. Is there anything that comes to mind? Huh. Well, uh, you know, it, I started seeing it a little bit even during our Halo 2, uh, which goes back quite a ways. We were making Halo 2, you know, in 2002, 2003, uh, which was... Uh, close enough after 9-11 and if you you know you know the story of halo it's it's about this you know group of religious zealots that, <laughs> that uh, essentially uh, uh, believe t and and you know are, will commit suicide in order to for you know co you know keep their religion going i mean that's the characters we had for the covenant and we uh, that started making Microsoft a little bit nervous because they felt like there was a um, could be some backlash uh, from from the you know the the Muslim community in the Middle East that that maybe this could be seen as you know uh, Islamophobic and so we had to be all of a sudden we were being asked to be very careful about some names of people or references or phrases and things like that. So I started seeing that and I thought, well, that's not necessarily unreasonable because we weren't trying to do some sort of allegory uh, about the political situation, let's say in the, in, you know, in the world that had to do with jihadists and all the rest of it. Um, but I, I could see there was a point you probably, you, maybe you know the story, but one of our main characters, the arbiter, was not oh. the arbiter during the whole time we were making halo 2 the character's name was uh he was called the the dervish oh. and uh we had recorded all the voice i had directed all the actors and everybody was using the term dervish and then we found out that like oh uh this could uh be an in seen as an insult um because there is a a, a islamic religious uh figure known as dervishes and um so we had to change it we were we were forced to change that um name uh to to a different name so we came up with the arbiter i was never really happy about it i thought you know this is an artistic choice this is what we had from the beginning we were not making any sort of trying to make any sort of political or religious comment um you know, we had tons of religious imagery, the the Ark, Halo, the Covenant, all these things are, are sort of religious, you know, imbued with religious, you know, terminology. So I didn't see why the dervish was a problem, but uh, we were forced to change that. So I could see that there were going to be the bigger the product, the more uh, fingers would be in the pie trying to mess with things. Yeah. And I, and I think back to games of that era. There were definitely games with with much more specific and obvious political references. I think of Metal Gear Solid Four. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That was basically about wars in the Middle East being fought right. by uh, private military corporations. Yep. But uh, that's interesting. Oh well. And by the way, you can always like if your plot line deals with an evil white person or an evil corporation, you're fine. <laughs> that is like. Evil white guys, especially men, and evil corporations, no problem. You will never get pushback on that. Um, that's just, and that's been around forever. Like it's always great, and it's, and you can also be, yeah. Let's make the Christians hypocrites and mm. and bad people. That's easy. You, you're never going to get pushback on that. There you go. I think that one of the games the follow probably. If that came out now, the some of the original stories, mm -hmm. even though they're even though it's very popular now, some of the original stories they would not be allowing some of that. I mean, on one hand, you have people who are who are, think they're they're worshippers of Elvis, but on the other hand, you've got you know uh, how can, how can I say it like like children who are sacrificing themselves to nuclear weaponry and stuff like right. that. Right. So it's a really interesting uh, time that we live in, you might say. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you hear Jerry Seinfeld uh, complaining now about, you know, the kind of comedy that's no longer allowed. And even, you know, there will never be, at least under the current 
atmosphere that we have, the climate that's happening in entertainment, you won't, you won't get some of these great sitcoms that, that used to be on TV. And I think it's the same way across the board with all sorts of entertainment. It's going to be a while for this tide to like pass through and maybe withdraw and we get back to, hey, let's let entertainment people and creative people just make what they want to make. And if you don't like it, then don't buy it. But, um, you know, the. I don't know who, you know, the thought police that are, that's happening in today's world is, is completely insane right now, in my opinion. Do you think that it, it's too late though? I look at a lot of these things. I don't think there's going to be many other sitcoms that, that come out specifically sitcoms, but do you think it's too late for a lot of the movie studios or is the, the backing of the money too much and they can just, they sort of wait it out? Well, you know, I what I'm seeing is there is that trend. Number one, we, media is so expansive now with with uh, you know all the different social media outlets. So you can have um, the competition go out there into the world, and people can have their sort of niche areas in different social media outlets. And if they're successful, if people, if the audience finds that, they'll they'll come to it. And you're getting the same thing with you know uh, crowdfunded uh, uh, entertainment. Um, you're starting to see, you know, like, um, for example, The Chosen, I think, is a, is a really well done, great series. It's getting having great success. It would never be produced by any normal uh, established studio in Hollywood or any place else. It has to be done as a crowdfunded thing. And then the audience comes and sees it. And so I think there is a tendency where, where these things can become successful again. As long as nobody puts their thumb on the scale and tries to make these things go away, um, let let the you know let the different ideas compete with each other and let different creative people create what they want to create and 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 not be interfered with. So I yeah, I don't know I don't think it's, it might be too late for the big studios, but that's fine. The big studios can go away and dissolve into nothingness over time. That's fine with me. Yeah, if there was maybe like a Steam platform for for movies or something, that would be interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Martyforcongress.vote is where the platform is, uh, Nevada's 3rd Congressional District. Anything else you want to say? Any uh, You want to tell anybody which video games they should be playing? <laughs> <laughs> Support, throw, a back, throw a big backing or behind a, an indie game or something? Boost there. Oh, wow, There's yeah. Some... You know, well, I'll tell you, the... the... The game that it was the last game that I worked on, which is still being worked on now and, and is getting better and better and is about to come out with a, its campaign mode, uh, is Six Days in Fallujah. Oh, which is, I, that's it, on my wish list, Marty. Yes, yeah, it's a tremendously good game. Um, not a very big team working on it. The team is getting bigger all the time, but they're doing just great stuff. I talked to you know my former partner Jamie the other day, and he's very encouraging. Uh, uh, I it. You, what's happening with the development of that game is just getting better and better all the time. It's a slow build. It's, it's not the, you know, it doesn't have the backing of, you know, a Microsoft or an Activision. So it can just, you know, hire a thousand people and, and spend a couple of years and then come out full fledged, but it's in early access and it's getting better all the time. So I highly recommend people ch check that one out. You heard it here first. Thanks a lot, Marty. <laughs> I appreciate it. Always happy to talk about politics and games. This is yeah. a mixture of my perfect world. <laughs> so I appreciate it a lot, man. Great. Thanks, Andrew.